Today's story demonstrates how the love of God brings harmony and music into the lives of people who struggled to get through decades of oppression and poverty. Recently in South Africa, male gospel choirs from three countries brought rejoicing and healing to a deeply wounded country. It's sad that the story of South Africa begins with racial divisions, oppression, and the violent death of thousands of innocent people, people who just wanted a life of basic freedoms, equality, liberty. For 300 years, the European settlers oppressed the native population of South Africa, enslaved thousands and compelled millions more into forced labor and subservience, and treated them as foreigners in their own land. Then in 1948, just as these oppressed people were starting to speak out and gain some liberty, the government made conditions even worse. The all-white government determined to force the non-white South Africans to live in separate areas and to use separate public services. Most were given only menial, low-paying jobs. Good education was unavailable except through some Christian churches and schools. Novelist Alan Patton in 1948 captured this tragedy in his heart-wrenching book, Cry the Beloved Country for the unborn child that is the inheritor of our fear. Let him not love the earth too deeply. Let him not laugh too gladly when the water runs through his fingers, nor stand too silent when the setting sun makes red the veiled with fire. Let him not be too moved when the birds of his land are singing, nor give too much of his heart to a mountain or valley. South Africa's struggles continued with reformers such as Nelson Mandela. Mandela and others were in prison for years, sometimes decades, because they stood up against injustice and racism. But all that transforms into scenes like these, acts of brotherhood, expressions of acceptance and love between races, humility and equality, harmony of voices and hearts. How did such an amazing miracle happen? Today, we join this inspiring tour of music and stories. Pastor Dan Matthews, my friend and former host of Lifestyle Magazine, accompanied this tour of rejoicing. This is just a little taste of what we're going to be blessed with for the next several days. So be sure you stay with us as we hear more of this great music and hear the stories that brought these men to be a part of this chorus. What is it to be no color, not white, not black, that we are here as brothers to walk this land, to rock South Africa? As we continue on this mission tour, and I hope with what we do, there will be a sense of brotherhood that has almost never been experienced in South Africa before. I'm one of the conductors of the Arise O Men in association with the Oregon Adventist Men's Chorus. Please join me in this wonderful and glorious journey. This is our here, and you guys, please bring your music folders. Let's head out. Load up. Okay, uh, I'm going to head outside, make sure everyone gets on. How many do we have here? Let's count up numbers. There's something special about men's choruses. Uh, I don't know what, what it is. Um, the, I'm not sure whether it's a scientific thing or what, but all I know that the sound is beautiful. This is a no audition choir, which means even the least talented have a contribution to make. That's the one thing that has been thrilling to me, seeing what might be regarded as the least talented in music, but you look at their faces, the smiles, the commitment, 
it just blesses me. I'm handing out ties to um, the South African singers who have just arrived. Make sure you get a tie. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed your testimony. Something really fascinating is going to happen here today. I don't know whether it's ever happened any place else, ever. But there are three nations that are coming together, three choirs from three nations. All of them have rehearsed separately. We've never sung together together. And we're going to go on the platform and we're going to perform. You have plastic here with your ties. Uh, we have a bag we can put the trash in. Watch the conductor. Okay. You don't know what he's going to do. And neither does he. <laughs> So thank you very much for being here. This is exciting to be part of a church planting. Yes. And someday you'll come back here, there'll be a church here, there'll be people baptized because you showed up today. You know, when we thought about the distance that we came, it didn't seem like much because the distance from the throne of heaven to Calvary was so much longer. My Here we will ask our honorable chief to come, king to address us. A king has other small kings or chiefs under him. And that's exactly what we have here. And our king runs more than 30 villages. And I'm glad to announce that the king of this area is in our midst. And he is a church elder. Amen. What does the church say? Amen. Thank you, Brother Mkonto. I think it is appropriate at this time to say, because of the yearning, the deep-seated yearning in my family, to see the gospel being spread in the surrounding villages, I was becoming God's advisor in my prayer. My prayer was, God, you, you need to use me to do X, Y, Z. But I have now learned that God doesn't need me as an advisor. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. He can do without me, and today is proof. That is why I'm humbled. For a long time, the official uh, denomination here was the Dutch Reformed Church. For a number of reasons that I won't go into, it was the only church that was allowed to operate in this area as a gratitude to the way the Dutch Reformed people have helped the people in this area to buy land when the apart during the time when the apartheid government did not want blacks to own land. The chief who was introduced to you, to you here, Chief Sekhali, is not a member of our church, but he was more than willing to give us this land and to say, not only do I want you to build a church, I expect you to build a clinic and a school because we need a Christian education in this area. So we can learn a lot from his attitude. And where there's a vision, there's a possibility. God fights his battles in a very, very different way. He starts first by sending the singers to march up in front, to celebrate, uh, to conquer. And I, I truly believe that God has sent uh, arise, O men, uh, particularly um, you guys who have traveled miles and miles for more than 20 hours to be here um, as the, uh, the people who go ahead, to march ahead. So today is, is that celebration. God will do the rest. Um, my expectations are that he will do um, something beyond belief, beyond our wildest expectations, because that's what he does.
With the Oregon Adventist Men's Choir, um, God is truly doing wonderful things. It, it, it is definitely more than music. Um, it is, you've brought us love. Um, you've brought us, it's a revival. Um, it is um, an inspiration, especially to see men um, who are committed to the Lord, who are willing to stand up um, and be counted. You know, the Word of God says, and I, I looked and there was no one to stand in the gap. Um, and today, just by coming here, you stood in the gap for us. So that is why we appreciate it. Some of the men have never been part of a, a, a choruses or quartets or small groups, and they have found a musical home in this project. Our first performance is a free community concert for the homeless, the pensioners, the jobless, and the moneyless people. We have a lot of them in that space. We're going to St. Mary's Cathedral, which is located in the heart of Johannesburg, the most chaotic part. A lot of people are afraid to go to that space, but we are actually going there to make a difference to those lives. There is nothing as exciting as giving that first beat and hearing a beautiful sound coming from men. Renette Bosov in Afrikaans, which is my native language. Ek is Renette Bosov, aangename kennis. I was praying on Sunday after, uh, evening to God and I was saying my voice has changed into, into something else. I don't know exactly what, but sometimes I've got a bit of an identity crisis with my voice because uh, this kind of voice is not really acceptable, you know, in your general communities. It's like maybe a little bit more too, you know, too operatic. And, I was praying on Sunday after, uh, evening to God and I was saying I don't know exactly where he wants me to go with this voice. 
and lo and behold, on, on, on Monday morning, um, I got this phone call from Oregon Mail Choir. They are here and they're looking for a soprano and would I like to come for, you know, for an audition. And um, immediately I thought, wow, this was, this was an answer to prayer like the very next day. I'm walking up Signal Hill above Seaport Beach, just near Cape Town, and right out there is Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela spent most of his 27 years of imprisonment. I was the prison guard who looked after Mandela from 1978 till 1982 on Robben Island. And he was seeking that to let his smoke out of prison when he was still a prisoner to let his smoke out of prison when he was still a prisoner to my wife. I wish all of you had the privilege of being right where I am in the midst of this wonderful sound of harmony, voices of men who love each other, who have come for the purpose of illustrating brotherhood across this great land of South Africa. The concerts are scheduled for here in Cape Town. We're also going to be in Durban. We're going to be in Port Elizabeth and back in Johannesburg for a concert. This is the Arise Old Man Chorus. As we are assembled on our way to Robben Island, the place where Nelson Mandela was in prison for most of 27 years. And it was this historic experience that brought such a dramatic change to the whole country of South Africa. What we're doing here is speaking to the world. Yeah, yeah. And it's speaking to the world about what I think to be one of the most important subjects besides salvation, and that is getting along, Amen. relationship. Amen. Yes. And, and I hope we can, in this process, represent what Nelson Mandela invested so Come much as his life yes. Yes. by way of a dream yes. that somehow yes. uh, injustice yes. and, and divide among people yes. could be united. Yes. And we come saying Jesus yes. is the uniter. Yes, yes. Yes, this is uh, a very special morning for all of us who are associated with the Arise Man mission. Uh, because uh, we're, we're demonstrating with this experience today that I guess, I guess I can say we express a big amen for who Mandela was and what he stood for. And we are desirous of putting our feet on the ground where this man stood so that we can maybe experience a little bit better some of the things he stood for. This is this big fancy shopping center here in the harbor as we're about to disembark for Robben Island. We're looking forward, I guess, to a 20 to 25 minute uh, run across the water. This has to be a very special time for anyone who would get to come to Robben Island. Yes, we can read headlines in the news, even read books that give us the history of an experience like this, but until you stand here, and, and I've already expressed it as holy ground, and here today we've had opportunity to be with this gentleman who spent 10 years incarcerated here simply because he wanted the right to be understood, accepted, and treated as a child of God, another human being. I've just got to say, I'll never be, never be just the same after having visited Robben Island and put my head in that little cell where Nelson Mandela spent 18 years of his life sleeping on a mat, the thickness of a blanket, 
and through the cold, frigid, terrible weather of this place, covered by two other blankets, and even had to drop his knees under his chin a bit because it wasn't long enough space for a tall man like him to sleep. And speaking of tall man like him, without the elevation that he ultimately achieved, this place might be much like it always had been. And uh, I'm grateful that we can be here and take a moment really to acknowledge who this man was and what he did and to thank God that there is a modern Moses who can do whatever it takes to free his people. Nothing could be more appropriate for us to sing a song of unity, brotherhood, and hope than right here on Robben Island. Hear the harmony. It, the, the spirit of brotherhood and unity. This is terrific. And people are joining us. And that's the intent of this tour, is to not only represent the principles for which these courses stand, but to have others become a part of us as we become a part of them. The Arizo Man Concert Series that's happening all across South Africa happens in various places like this wonderful Artscape Opera House here in Cape Town. I'm so glad to have you join us as these men provide more than music in these various concert experiences. So come with me now as we go inside to hear the men sing. Wow, what a wonderful venue for this concert. Cape Point in the Cape of Good Hope Nature Preserve, a very important point on the planet. I am really spellbound by being here in this important location. This is Cape Point. This is the place where the Indian and the Atlantic Oceans converge. And it kind of fits our Lifestyle Magazine Brotherhood Tour because we're all about where peoples converge as well. We came into this glorious theater, concert hall here in Gramstown, the Guy Butler Theater, 
and had a wonderful rehearsal. And before the rehearsal concluded, all of the power in Guy Butler Theater went off. We made our way by many fleshlights out to the lobby area. Ladies and gentlemen, we have singers here from, I think, six different nations. We have Romania, we have Lesotho, we have Botswana, Botswana Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, we have the United States, and guess what? South Africa. South Africa. <laughs> The power did not come on, and the power did not come on, and finally, the inspired leaders of this chorus said, let's move out into the foyer area, the rotunda out there, and see if we can sing a song. The men, always ready to sing, responded quickly and wonderfully. As the lights came on, the men were still singing. consequence. We were just coming back in here to get our coats. <laughs> and you followed us in here. <laughs> and so now you're stuck with us. So enjoy just a little more. You're getting encores that most audiences never get. songs were not enough. And so they actually put on an entire repertoire. Thank you so much for being with us again today. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, you take care of yourself.